And for this we have Liberty, First Breaker, Tradition, Tetanang, and Simcoe. So got quite a few hops in this one. And on this I have the grain bill is and this is for a, like a two and a half gallon batch, so it's going into the party pig. That's why I've uh, scaled it down. Um, and this we have four pounds, 1.4 ounces of pale malt, 4.1 ounces of honey malt, 8.2 ounces of flaked barley, 4.1 ounces of uh, caramel crystal 40, 4.1 ounces of special B, and I'll also be adding 8.2 ounces of uh, lactose to that as well. And each one of these hop additions will be 0.21 ounces. So just about a quarter of an ounce. And so, and we're also going to be using, uh, if I have it, I'll have to check, US05 yeast. I'm not sure. I'll have to look. If I don't, I'll just use something else. No big deal. So anyway, I'll go get my water and we can get started. Okay, I got my sparge water heated up to just right about 160. Because I'm going to mash this at about 152. So, turn it up just a little higher than I normally going to mash it. I'm sure all of you have watched all these videos before. It's pretty boring. <laughs> So I'll just bust them up. So I'm going to match this about an hour. And I'll probably stir this about every, oh, 15 minutes or so. Okay, we mashed this at 152 for an hour and then I raised the temperature to 168 and we're going to leave it for another 15 minutes, 20 minutes uh, to let it mash out. So we will be back when we get ready to start the boil. Okay, time's up.
Start the boil. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the hops in here. This is the combination of all of them that I showed you earlier. I'll have a Simcoe edition at 15 and 5 minutes. So I'll we'll go ahead and drop that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and let this drain as long as I can. Yeah, we got ball. Okay, we're ready for our 15 minute addition. I'll probably miss most of that and get it in there. I want to help it. Let's see if I can find a whirl flock tablet to throw in there as well. And there's like half a whirl flock tablet. And we'll be back in 10 more minutes for the last edition. Well, it just totally occurred to me that I forgot to put the lactose in, so well, let's just go ahead and do that now. Just a little. Okay, that's about half. Duh. <laughs> oh, well, better late than never. Okay, we are done. <clears throat> with our boiling, we will get ready to chill this down, so Hopefully adding that lactose The milk sugar at the end of that and stuff's not gonna mess anything up Because I think normally you add it at the end, but when I made it the last time I added it at the beginning So I'll get the chiller out in the hose and get started set up my fermentation controller, temperature controller, and then we are good to go. Okay, I've got this set to 64 degrees, so we're going to ferment it at 64, and we'll be back probably in, oh, a couple of weeks. So.
Welcome to Hobrew Wednesday. Cheers. This is my uh, drop your top amber ale. It's got a little sediment in it because I shook it up when I got it out of the uh, refrigerator. I tried this a week ago. It was pretty green. It's still a little bit green. So basically, um, I've just been kind of drinking a little bit at a time. So uh, what's been happening? Well, not a whole lot as far as uh, brewing and stuff is concerned. Um, I did do a pear cider. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let that ferment out completely and then I'm going to uh, kill off the yeast and then I'm going to back sweeten it and I'm going to keg it. Um, I've got, I ordered all my kegging parts. I had, I had quite a bit of it before, but uh, I did. I had a regulator, but I had bought it off eBay, so I wasn't sure if it was actually any good or not. And I bought it off eBay probably 15, 20 years ago. Um, so I did go ahead and buy a new regulator. And I bought the guard to go with it, so in case it gets knocked over. Bought some uh, replacement O-rings to recondition the cake in case I have to. And I also, uh, and I haven't unwrapped this one thing, but it's the uh, picnic cap and all that stuff to go with it. So anyway, the only thing that I have to do is go to the local specialty gas store and actually get some CO2 in a uh, tank. But I said I did. I bought a keg, actually two kegs, a long time ago. And I've had these up in the cabinet out here in the garage for probably 10 years. But get it back in the box. I like to polish that up a little bit if anybody's got any suggestions. So anyway, so that's I'm gonna keg the beer, keg the cider, and then I also got some uh, malts, and I'm gonna try an experiment. And we had talked, some of us talked about doing an experimental beer or whatever, and I'm gonna try a imperial porter with cherries and age it on some uh, cognac soaked oak chips. So that's what I'm going to be doing there. Um, when I get my tank, my CO2 tank and everything, my first time I run through this or whatever, I'll probably videotape it and I'll probably be asking for some help because this is, like I said, I've never kegged before. But my little party pig company is going out of business so uh, I priced some of the pressure pouches and was going to actually buy it from the company because now some of the homebrew stores don't actually have them. And it was like going to be like I think it was like seven dollars or something like that or something to buy them and then the shipping was like sixteen dollars for shipping or something I mean it was ridiculous crazy and I thought I'm not doing that so probably what I'm going to do with the party pigs is I'm probably actually going to just uh, put plain water in them or whatever and put it in the fridge so we have cold water all the time so other than that not a whole lot going on um, I do need to rack off the cider and Put it into a secondary so it can clear out a little bit more and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some stuff in there to kill the yeast. That name escapes me right now. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing with that and that's like I said, and then I'm going to go ahead and keg it and carbonate it. Uh, suggestions for carbonation, I don't know how much to put in it really. Mm. So anyway. So that's what I will be doing. So I just wanted to touch base with y'all real quick since I haven't uh, done an actual Hungry Wednesday video for quite some time. Um, I'll have some other things going too as well. I bought a bread maker. Actually, I traded the bread maker for three bottles of my wine. So it's a $175 bread maker in exchange for three bottles of homemade wine. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I could pass it up. So I'll be doing some uh, 
probably some bread making videos and uh, got a book on how to do uh, focaccia and pita and all that other stuff. So I'll probably be doing some more cooking videos doing that kind of thing. But it's like I said, when I get started to do my kegging and everything like that, then I'll probably do another video then. But I just want to touch base with you all real quick. So uh, happy homebrew Wednesday. Cheers, 17. And hopefully I'll see you probably next week. Thanks.